Good morning. Today we're going to be going over notes on the metric system, metric units, and metric conversions. You should be familiar with the metric system already. You have been using metric units since you started taking high school courses, so biology and especially in chemistry. You should know that there are two systems that we can use. We have the English system. That's what you'll probably be more familiar with. It has stuff like inches, pounds, gallons, stuff like that. Then you have the metric system. Metric system has units like grams, millimeters, kilometers, centimeters, uh, kilograms, stuff like that. We'll be using the metric system. The only reason that we use that is because the rest of the world uses the metric system and then that's what the scientific community uses. So whenever they publish information or they publish data or lab research, it's always done using metric system units. That way anybody in the world can look at the data and interpret it for themselves. Okay, so again, we'll be using the metric system. Now with the metric system, it's a lot easier to convert from one unit to the other, which is another reason why we use it. And the way that you can do that is each metric unit has a prefix and then there's also a base unit to it. The prefixes are the ones that we see here. So you have all of these, the ones that you'll be familiar with or the ones that we'll be using the most are these six in the middle, kilo, hecto, deca, deci, centi, milli. Now what these values tell you is how big that prefix is when compared to the base unit. For example, a kilometer or a kilometer would be 1000 times bigger than a meter. A millimeter would be one one thousandth times smaller than a meter. So the prefix tells you how big or how small it is when compared to the base unit itself. So again, you need to know these six prefixes and you will need to know them in order. Kilo, hecto, deca, deci, centi, milli. Right here, right between deca and deci is where you have your base unit. And I'll get to those in a little bit. So again, here are your six prefixes that you need to know. Okay. In terms of base units, there's four main areas of measurement that we'll be looking at in this class. You'll be taking measurements for distance, volume, mass, and time. Each one of these has a base unit in the metric system. For distance, the base unit is the meter. We abbreviate that with the lowercase letter m. For volume, the base unit is the liter, and we abbreviate that with an uppercase letter l. And then you have mass. Okay, mass is measured in grams, or the base unit is grams, and we abbreviate that with a lowercase letter g. And then lastly, you have, whoops, you have time, and the base unit for that in the metric system is the second. Again, you can have a kilo second, you can have a millisecond, or you can just have a regular second. A second would have a value of one, and then if you said, let's say a kilosecond, that would be 1,000 times longer or bigger than a second, and a millisecond would be one 1,000th time shorter or smaller than a second. So again, any one of these six prefixes can go in front of any one of the base units that you have. You can have a kilometer, you can have a centimeter, a millimeter, you can have a kiloliter, a centiliter, a milliliter, same thing with grams and seconds. So any one of my six prefixes can go in front of any one of my base units and that's just going to change the size of the unit that you're talking about. Now in terms of converting from one unit to the other, it's a lot easier to do it in the metric system again because you're increasing by increments of 10 each time. It makes it easier to do that versus having to remember specific conversions like let's say from inches to feet well you'd have to remember that 12 inches are in one foot if that's not something that you can remember specific numbers again that's why the metric system is a lot easier so here okay we have the example of milligrams to grams here you're starting off with 1000 milligrams so milli i would find that here on my chart milligram to gram the gram would be the base unit here. So I'm moving from milli to centi, from centi to deci, and then from deci finally to the base unit. So that's one, two, three times that I'm going to be moving. Now so you can see here that if you're going to the left, you're going to be dividing by 10 each time. So here I would take the value that I know. I know that I'm starting off with 1000 milligrams. So 1000 milligrams is here. And I'm going to divide 1000 by 10 once. Whatever you get there, you divide that number by 10 again. And then whatever you get there, you divide that number by 10 again. And that would be how many grams are in 1,000 milligrams. So if you did that, then you should have gotten a value of 1. 
For the second example, you have one L, that should be a liter. Liters are your base unit. So you're starting off with one liter and you wanna compare that to milliliters. So you wanna see how many milliliters that is. So in this case, you're moving one, two, three times to the right. And in this case, you're gonna multiply by 10 each time. So again, I take one times 10 once, whatever you get there, you multiply it times 10 again. And finally multiplying it times 10 again, which would give you a value of 1,000. So one liter is equal to one milliliter. Here you have centimeters, cm. So centi, here's where you are on your chart. You want to convert that to millimeters, mm, here. So you're going to move one time. You're going from centi to milli, so you're moving to the right. So you would multiply 160 times 10 once. You would get a value of 1,600 millimeters is the same thing as 160 centimeters. Go ahead and try to do these on your own. And if you have questions, then I can go ahead and answer those when you come to class next time. And if not, then go ahead and do the rest of the practice problems. And I will see you next time you come to class. Bye.